Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to look at how you can use your Ansel to super simply host several WordPress instances. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the Ansel Nano here and we'll head into the template section. And there we have a rather new template. It's called the Lamp Stack, which comes completely pre-configured with everything you need to run basically any major web application. So here we have our Lamp Stack templates already downloaded. It might not be for you, but you can just simply um, download it here from the list of available templates. And it'll appear here once it's downloaded, ready for you to use it in your endlets. All right, so that's a very basic Debian 10 endlet with Nginx, MariaDB, PHP pre-configured and pre-installed. And we're going to be using this antlet to install WordPress on it and then create a template from that antlet, which we can then use to basically clone as many WordPress installations as we need. So let's head back into our antlet section here. Click on create. Let's give that the WordPress base name. The template's going to be our LAMP stack. RAM should be one gigabyte and one vCPU should be plenty. And let's hit create. This will now create an LXC antlet, which is basically a bare metal container. So it's super lightweight and won't take up any more resources than it really needs to. And all we need to do now is basically hit start here. I've already opened two more tabs. So one, it's gonna be the actual wordpress.org website where we get the WordPress installation. And then this is the WordPress CLI, which we will be using to manage auto updates, manage system updates, plugins, and also um, manage the different properties of the actual WordPress installation. For example, setting the home URL dynamically based on the URL we later have to make it available on the internet and stuff like that. But let's head back into our endless section here. So we can see it's currently running and let's see if we can connect. So go back into our um, SSH session here and connect to the antlet via simply SSH and then the IP address of the antlet, which you can find here. Oh, it's actually 11. So 10.1.1.11. That's the IP address of the antlet. And we accept the fingerprint. The password is, as always, Ansel. And that should be our lamp stack. Very good. Now we want to switch into the directory where all the web files are located. So that's var www html and right now in that directory should be nothing except those two um, default index files we can remove those um, let's just quickly do that and then download the wordpress files copy that link and use wget here to download that in our wordpress directory so once that's downloaded, all we need to do is extract it and make sure all those files are in the HTML directory. Since everything's pre-configured, we don't need to worry about the database setup, we don't need to worry about the Nginx setup, or Apache, whatever you prefer to use. This endlet is using Nginx pre-configured, and it's just basically putting the files there and then making sure it's available. Uh, via, for example, port forwarding, domain setup, whatever you prefer to use. All right, so let's try and extract that archive here, so I'm going to use tar xf latest, which should put everything in our WordPress directory, and then I'm going to remove the, oh, remove index and remove latest, and then basically move everything from inside WordPress to the current directory, which would, or which should, look like that, very good. Now we can remove the WordPress folder and we should have our WordPress base files inside the um, HTML directory. Okay, now one more thing to note is uh, Nginx uses a, its own user, it's wwdata. To make sure that WordPress is actually able to write to those files, we need to make sure that all those files actually belong to the wwdata um, user. So right now they're belonging to the nobody and no group. That's not very nice, so we're just going to go back a directory here and change the ownership recursively to the Nginx user. 
ch own dash r. Well, okay, yeah, we need to specify the directory, obviously. <laughs> All right. So once that's done, uh, that's basically all we need to do here on the command line. So now we can go back into Antman, and now we need to worry about how our users are actually going to be able to reach our WordPress installation. So for now, I'm just going to go with very basic port forwarding. So the idea is that I have my Ansel IP address here, which is 192.168.178.158 and then use a custom port, for example, 80 for port 80 on the um, antlet, and then 11 for the antlet's IP address. So when I go to port forwarding here, I can configure a new port forwarding rule, which I'm gonna just say it's TCP, the source port's gonna be 8011, and the antlet's gonna be WordPress base, the destination port is 80, and that will automatically redirect all traffic coming to this Ansel's IP on port 8011 and redirect it to the WordPress antlet to port 80. So we can use that port to visit our WordPress antlet on um, this machine right here. So let's just go in here and copy that part, put that in, and then go to the port 8011 we just specified. And if we did everything right, that should then load up our WordPress installation. And there we go. All right, so now we can click ourselves through the very famous five minute install here of WordPress. I'm gonna say English as my main language. I need to provide my database information. I don't have a database yet, so that's actually something I need to do right now. And I can use PHP my admin for that. So all I need to do here is go into that directory, go to PHP my admin, but I need to obtain or retain the port. That's obviously important. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll just try to find PHP my admin on my root Ansel, which is not found. So here I can now log in the root and the password is Ansel. And once I'm logged in, I can see here my PHP my admin dashboard, which allows me to also manage my databases, but for now create a new one. So that's just going to be my WordPress default database. Click Create. And now you can see I have one more database called WordPress, and that's the one I'll be actually using on, of course, my WordPress installation. So database name is WordPress. Username is root. The password is Ansel. Database host is localhost. And we can leave the table prefix. I want to very quickly mention that this is obviously nothing you should do in production. So if you want to do this right, you should create your own database and then you should create your own user which has only access to that database with obviously a different password than Ansel. But for now, since we're uh, running this offline and it's just for testing purposes, that's fine. So I click submit, it was able to connect to the database and all I need to do is click run the installation and it'll run through. So this is gonna be um, my WordPress installation or my WordPress information, my very basic um, blog setup. I can give it a site title, which I'm just going to name um, my awesome blog, for example, the username for now. Well, don't do this in production, but it's just going to be admin and the password is also admin. Yes, I know. I promise I won't do that in production. And my email is mark at ansel.com. All right, for now, well, I don't really care about search engine engines since you know that website's running offline but hey let's just click it anyway all right we're going to install wordpress which it'll basically do automatically by simply hitting this button and it'll do that by creating all the necessary database um, or the entire database structure that is necessary for running wordpress so if you now click into that wordpress database again you can see that it's created all these tables that wordpress um, requires. So just to make sure that everything's actually working, let's go into our backend and make sure we can reach everything here. And it looks good. Let's check the system. No, it's under tools, the site help. And it 
take some time to load. All right, well, let's check our server info here. So our server info says PHP version 7.4.6, which is quite new. Um, it's running Nginx 1.14, and we have more than enough memory for our basic WordPress installation here. And basically all uh, requirements that we need for our installation here are met. So now let's try and configure the WordPress CLI. And for that, I'm going to go back into that WordPress CLI.org website again, and I'm going to head down to the installing section. And I'm basically just going to follow all of these um, instructions. I'm going to download the WordPress CLI file. I'm going to make it executable and I'm going to change it uh, or and move it to my path. So I can just simply call it by typing WP and then invoke the command. So let's go back to that section here, go back into our directory, um, copy that over. We're going to use wget just because I like it more than curl. And now let's move it over wp to user local bin and chmod plus x user local bin and also well let's rename it to just wp um, user local bin wp all right so again what i did here is basically just move the file we just downloaded from the current root directory to my executable path, so my user local bin. Then I made that file executable, and I then renamed the WordPress-CLI.var to just user or to just WordPress. All right, so that should now allow me to type wp-info, and voila, everything's working. So what I could do now is I could go back into my WordPress directory, HTML, and run that there and see if it actually detects my WordPress installation, which it appeared to do. All right, nice. So that's all configured properly. I can now use the WordPress command line. And now let's just save that as it is right now um, as a template so we can use that for as many amplets as we'd like. So first I want to shut it down. That will shut down my amplet and you can see in the terminal that I've logged out of my SSH connection. Then I'll go into the WordPress directory, create a new snapshot, which I'll just call template. Oops, sorry, let's spell it right, template. And then from that template I will or from that snapshot called template, I will actually create a new template, which I can very easily do by just hitting those three dots and then create template from this. And now I can call that simply WordPress. Again, well, let's spell it right. <laughs> and hit create template. And that'll fetch off a background job, which will automatically run in the background as the name suggests and create the template so it's available under my template section. And once that's finished, I can simply go back into my template section, click on create, and simply use it here as one more template to basically clone it as many times as I like and run as many different WordPress installations as possible, or as I need, obviously. So while that's creating the templates, let's think about where to go from here. So obviously, I don't want to just run a WordPress installation that's only visible to my uh, or to myself and possibly uh, some local users in my own network. So we actually have different methods of making available. We can either use a domain name, which I think will be the most um, or the most common way of just making WordPress installation public. We could use some forwarding either through a custom port or um, something else, or we could also give it a dedicated um, bridged NIC, which will give it its own IP address, not just on the 10.1.1 local network, but on my 192.168.178 network. Since there's so many options to choose from, and it really depends on what you plan on doing, I highly recommend you simply go to the docs.ansel.com section, 
under the Antlets section here. And then you can um, read under the Access Antlets page here, and you have a lot of different options. So for example, you can access the Antlets by domain name, you can access the through the VNC console, which is just for uh, the terminal, and you can also access them via the IP address that I just mentioned, via Bridge NIC. And that will give you all the information you need to configure the Antlet exactly to your needs and um, make the WordPress installation available to whomever you like. All right, that's still taking some time, but it'll finish soon enough. And yeah, that's how you can create as many WordPress Antlets as you'd like with just a matter of minutes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Talk to you in the next one. Bye guys.